Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, December 11th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, today is, of course, Microsoft's Patch Tuesday, but we also got a somewhat normal updates from Adobe. What's sort of a little bit surprised here, we also got updates from Apple. Apple pretty much updated everything. So let's start with Microsoft. I would rate Microsoft's patch Tuesday sort of as overall average 36 vulnerabilities were fixed. Out of those 36, there are seven critical ones and one, and that's of the interesting part here, that already was being exploited according to Microsoft. The vulnerability already got exploited is CVE 2019-1458 and it is a vulnerability that allows approach escalation. So that's why Microsoft rates it as important. What's sort of a little bit interesting here is that Kaspersky Labs reported this vulnerability originally and apparently they found it in the wild being exploited uh, in conjunction with a Google Chrome zero day that was patched in November. With both vulnerabilities being patched, Kaspersky released details about this particular exploit. They're calling this Operation Wizard Opium and it did affect a Korean news site. So essentially what happened here is this Korean news site got uh, compromised and JavaScript was added to their page. This JavaScript then used the Chrome vulnerability in order to be able to execute code on the victim system. And then the approach escalation vulnerability in Windows in order to gain system access. And of course, uh, they are now also no longer restricted by the sandbox. A little bit odd to see a vulnerability like this being used in a new site that apparently has a very broad audience. These are typically very high valuable vulnerabilities that tend to be exploited more in targeted attacks. Now the Chrome update should have protected you here, but still definitely do apply the Windows update uh, to prevent the approach escalation issue, which of course could be exploited with any number of other vulnerabilities. In addition to patches, this security update also includes a guidance for cleaning up orphan keys generated on vulnerable TPMs and used for Windows Hello for Business. That's the title of this particular document. It's related to the TPM fail vulnerability. If you patched it, you still need to address these orphaned keys in case you're using Windows Hello for Business. Now, as far as Adobe goes, we got four different bulletins from Adobe, one for Adobe Cold Fusion, one for Brackets, and then Adobe Photoshop CC, and of course, Adobe Acrobat and Reader. Nothing for Flash, and as a result, also no corresponding advisory from Microsoft. As far as Adobe Reader goes, which is probably the most commonly installed piece of software, among uh, the ones that Adobe patched today, there are 21 vulnerabilities being addressed. Several of them are rated as critical and allow for arbitrary code execution. Cold Fusion, which is also a big target usually because it's exposed via web applications. Well, in this case, we only have an important one and that's a approach escalation of vulnerability. The issue here is in secure inherited permissions of a default installation directory. So essentially if you installed it, some of the directories may not have the permissions set quite right. Likely not a huge problem and something that you should have fixed if you followed the lockdown procedure that usually should be applied. Well, and then we got Apple's updates from today. These updates as usual for Apple apply across all the different operating systems in the Apple ecosystem, including watch, TV, iPad OS, iOS, and of course, Mac OS. 
Couple of vulnerabilities that stick out there. Uh, one vulnerability that allows arbitrary code execution when receiving a FaceTime call. I think there was a similar vulnerability a year or so ago that was exploited in some targeted attacks. Also, a lot of open source software got updated. One that affects pretty much all the operating systems is Lip. Expat. That's an XML parsing library and again a code execution vulnerability here. Also, for example, TCP dump finally got updates for the vulnerabilities that were addressed in 2018. Also, a one 2017 vulnerability here in TCP dump that's being fixed with this update. And well, then I got one more patch and that's from Intel. Intel updated a bunch of sort of firmware issues. One interesting kind of vulnerability that they are patching here is referred to as Blunder Vault. This essentially allows an attacker to corrupt the integrity of the Intel SGX, their secure enclave, by controlling the processor voltage. I think we had a similar vulnerability like this a year or so ago. So what's happening is if uh, the processor voltage is too low, too high, then you're sort of in an undefined state for uh, some of uh, these functions. And as a result, you essentially end up with memory corruption and can read data that you're not supposed to read. But with all the updates today, I haven't had a chance to look at the exact details of this vulnerability. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.